Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to a new series that I thought I would start looking at and this is a series in which I'm going to take a look at games ranked on BoardGameGeek, which is the world's biggest database for board games, that are ranked 10,000 and below. Now this is kind of a, an interesting thing to look at for me because you know the I've done I've taken a look at the top 100 and I always tell people but there are games outside the top 100 that are good a game that's ranked 976 is really good yeah but what if I jump not to a thousand but to 10,000 so in each video of this series I'm just going to take a look at 100 games so today I'm taking a look at 10,000 to 10,100 and some of them I, I, I'll know. Some of them I might be able to tell you if it's good or not. I'll, I'll, I have ratings for them. Others of them I don't know. I might find them interesting and some I'll just ex ignore completely. Realize of course that these numbers could easily change from both me recording this to posting it and then even farther down the road. So this is a moment in time that we're looking at right now and it's mostly just for fun. So here we go. So I have here on the screen uh, 10,001, but I did say 10,000 and below. So the game that's 10,000 here is King's Ransom. And this one I've actually played here. It says I've ranked at 6.5, and it's like a chess style game where you're going to be placing these tiles and then flipping the tiles over, revealing them, and going after the other person. Uh, so this is six years ago that I reviewed this here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would not have bought it based on that cover. I think the cover I played was a, a somewhat nicer looking cover, but there you go. 10,000, we're off to a start. The Ancient World, I guess, but the actual name of the game, The King's Ransom. All right, so back here, 10,001, So Long Sucker. <laughs> I like the name of it, from 1964. Uh, this one's a cutthroat game of gluttony. Uh, that one sounds interesting enough. I guess we'll have to take a look at that one. Ooh, wow. Everyone's trying to eat the succulent meats that appear on their plates while avoiding the equally delicious but satisfying desserts that get in the way. What? Is this like a Brazilian barbecue? Gotta say, those cards look amazing. Meat cards. Dessert cards. Uh, is that to show you if you want the food to come or not? <laughs> oh, man. This, this... I like the theme of the game. I mean, I don't know if I want to play a game that's necessarily about gluttony, but the idea of it sounds interesting. Huh. Well, go figure. All right. Me Tierra. This one here is a game that I, I like. It's kind of like a family version of Agricola because you're going to go to different spots here. It's a really pretty game. So let's see here if I can find some pictures. You can see here from the cover that the cover is essentially kind of this anime type style here. Uh, but the board itself looks like this, and you'll be placing workers on the board and trying to get different resources that you can turn into other foods, that you can turn into other foods, and there's all different foods. It's not polished at all, but I thought it was a fun game, and my daughter Melody especially liked it, and we played it uh, quite a while ago. This was 2010, and then we played a revised version of it in 2017. All right, Pictionary, the campaigns of King David, Enemies of Rome, Cauldron Quest. I really feel like I've heard of Cauldron Quest before. Let's take a look here. Yeah, this one here is from Peaceable Kingdom. Okay, Peaceable Kingdom, you got to put them in. I want, yeah, this is a cooperative game. Peaceable Kingdom makes a lot of cooperative games where you're all working together trying to stop, you know, just to, to win the game. All right, Legends of Wrestling, Federation Space from 1981. Daybellis, okay, Red Vengeance. Herp. Wow, this is the Viking game of Royal Conflict. I gotta say that, that that little thumbnail there isn't doing me anything. It just looks like someone, ooh, wow, what a weird looking game this is. Weird. It's like a game that's trying to look cooler than it should be. <laughs> All right. Well, that's an interesting style game. It has this very abstract look to it. So it's been rated 49 times, 13 comments. Well, let's read what some of the comments say about this one. Unclear rules. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a Kickstarter game. I see. It's an abstract game. Fantastic looking. So uh, it's a unique game. You get action points. Oh, well, we were just talking about action points the other day. 
All right, Battleground Fantasy Warfare, the High Elves. They're actually not one of my favorite factions. They got magic and stuff, but they're definitely a good faction. Uh, Chocolate, How to House the Murder, Can Kanaloa. Now, this is not the Kanaloa that I've played before. Yeah, this is going from Island Island to pick up fruit to give the gods, which actually sounds very similar to the Kanaloa I played. Well, that board doesn't look bad at all. Wow. This is 2002? That's pretty good for an 18, 18 years ago. I really like how that looks a lot. All right. Home Sweet Home, Moonga Invaders 2 player, Robots on the Line. I thought I played Robots on the Line. Maybe I did the uh, a Kickstarter preview for it. No? All right. It's a little black and white here for me. When I look at these cards. Oh, it's not black and white. Just, okay, so you're building different robots. I feel very confident that I have played something like this at some point. Well, it looks really interesting. I mean, I like the the little grids here. Investor, capitalist, millionaire, scientist. I have definitely seen this game at least. Huh. So you're building different body parts, building it out of a grid. Okay. Well, the one I never played. Now, don't take my uh, saying these games look interesting, like hunting these down for me, you know. Uh, maybe they're good or maybe they're not. Wonderland's War here. This one is coming out later this year. So this is one that's like already, look at it, it already has a ranking and it's not even out yet. Just on Kickstarter, it already has 49 ratings. This one does look really cool. I mean, look at that. It's taking the Alice in Wonderland and all the different fantasy things. That's just fantastic artwork. So I bet some people are just rating it based on that alone, and they probably played it at conventions and things like that, too. So a new game that's hit here. Let's see. War to Access Chain Reaction 3.0. <laughs> I guess the first couple didn't do so well. Juices 40 27 Spycraft collectible card game. Now this is an interesting one. This is actually a game that's well, I remember when this came out. This came out from AEG. You probably don't remember this one much. This is back when AEG in 2004. They were not as big into board games now. They're making collectible card games. And I actually had this one for a while. Uh, the cover looks like this here, or one of the covers of the of the game. And the the cards, let me see if I can. Yeah, so they look like this, and you have gadgets and vehicles and firearms. I kept meaning to play this, and then I never got around to doing it, and then it's now 15 years later. But I, I really like the concept of a spy game. The collectible card game, that's kind of a thing that's in the past. But it's interesting to see this one sitting here in the 10,000 range. Tomahawk, Picket, Hoyles Games. Hoyles Games! Only 66 people have rated Hoyle's Games. So Hoyle's Games is a book that you can go to the bookstore. I think you can still buy it now. And it talks about different games like chess, backgammon, and Picket. I don't know how to pronounce it. Piquet? Anyway, I have a copy of Hoyle's Games somewhere. Uh, this looks similar to the back of the book. See, Hoyle's Rules of Games. Is this the one I have? Yes, that's the one I have. Interesting. Maybe I should rate it. What should I write Hoyle's games? Uh, I'll give it a, a six. Because I don't read it very much. Ooh, this Paletto game looks pretty interesting. That's like a little abstract strategy game. All right, this is from, oh, Clemens. I have not played this one then. Wait. No, I definitely, didn't I play this live with Z at one point? Eh, I feel like I did. Oh, it's a derivative of Kex. Nope, I haven't played Kex. Ooh, that looks cool too, though. All right, well, back to the list. Um, ooh, Forest of Tataraba. That has a really pretty cover. I believe we had this one sitting. I think we actually have this one in our collection right now. Not that we're playing it, but I think somebody has this in their queue for review. That sure is a pretty looking game. I like the wooden pieces a lot. All right, oh, here's a couple games that I have played. Well, first, Machi Koro Foosball. Did you even know that? I don't think it has anything to do with Machi Koro. Oh, does it? Have you guys heard of this? I have not. 
Yeah, it looks like Machi Koro, but it's football. It's like a very specific version of Machi Koro. Well, that's fascinating. I think I would actually play that one. Anyway, back to games I have played. Oklahoma Boomers. This is a really solid two-player game. Um, you can see I gave it an eight here, and you're basically putting these pieces down on a grid, and there's, a, you know, I'm a big fan of grids. This is not a great looking game, but I really like how it played. Um, Martin F. has designed many games over the years. Uh, Limes, uh, Cities, which was recommended for the Spielers Yards that you can see here. And I shouldn't say many, but his latest game is Epoch, the Early Inventors. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, I guess, some of his newer games. But Oklahoma Boomers, that might be a nice one to reprint. Ivian, or Ivian, or however you pronounce this one. This is another one. I gave this one a seven. This is a game which is really a unique game in that you're building these decks of cards. And there's, like, you're building your own race and your own class and things like that. And there's so many different things you can put together. It's maybe a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but I enjoyed it. Meeple Party. That sounds like a fun game. I thought I pulled this one out and then put it back. You're throwing a party at your house. I do like the art, even, you know, the people in those rooms like very specific colors. All righty, let's see what else we got here. The Complete War Games Handbook. Everyone needs one of those. The Complete Book of War Games. Sorry, but the Complete War Games Handbook, slightly ranked higher. And the Soldier's Companion below that. It's really weird all three of those are close together. Calypso, Pictionary, the 15th anniversary. Rummy Cube XP, the Warlord game. Well, that's from 1977. That's an old game. I gotta gotta take a look at this one. Oh, it's a medieval war game. You're a knight. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Well, let's back away slowly from that one. Although it doesn't. I mean, other than components, the components don't look that great. But wow, this looks like a game. As a kid, though, I would have played a lot of it if I had come across it. Huh. The warlord game. Designer Robert Borth Williams. Let's see if he's designed anything else. Nope. Only game the guy's ever designed. Another Here's How to Host a Murder. NATO Dark Future from 1988. Oh, I wonder if they predicted our future. Let's look. Oh, <laughs> this is definitely Mad Max. <laughs> look at that box cover. <laughs> the Game of Highway Warriors. Alrighty. Dark Future. Alrighty. So... That's funny. Oh, that's some plastic, plastic pieces. Someone's got to paint it this sucker up. Here's some cars. Did they paint them? No, but that's what they look like. This actually looks pretty interesting. When did this game come out? In 88. I guess it looks like a 1988 game. Is there a picture of the game? Oh, there it is. Ooh. Eh, we can't get any zoomer in than that. Interesting. All right. Let's keep moving here. Leave the dark future behind. There's 1883. I'm assuming that's one of the 18xx games. Came out in 2019. Pirates. Ooh, Ace of Aces. Jet Eagles. So if you've never played Ace of Aces, it's a fascinating game. Each person has their own book. Yeah, let me show you here. And this will show you the page, right? And that's what you can see. You can see that jet there at the corner. And then you pick your maneuver down here at the bottom. And your opponent picks their maneuver. And then you talk to each other and you go to one of these pages in the book based on what the other person has done. And then it will show you a different page. Oh, that's, oh that is the page, Ron. Uh, I can't see anyone at all here. Looks like this one has radar. Usually these are done with like small airplanes, not necessarily jets. Wow, there certainly is a lot of information here about F-16s. Interesting, but I always thought the Ace of Aces, even though I feel like it's a, a product of its time, it's like a video game before there were video games, it's a cool idea. I don't know if they're worth playing nowadays. Um, Warlock from 1980. Well, that has 260. We got to take a quick look at Warlock. 260 rankings here. Wow, talk about a product of the times, though. Look at those cards. <laughs> oh, man. Alrighty. Well, good for Warlock here. This was published from Games Workshop at one point. Interesting. Well, here's a nicer looking picture. Oh, just chips and a thing in the middle. Oh, and they're at Stonehenge. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here to battle for Sector 219. Here's Black Dog. Black Dog has 141 rating, so that's one we should pause and look at. Oh, okay, this is from Schmidt Spiel. That looks interesting. It looks like a fun card game. I would... It's, what, five years old? This one probably never came to America. Let's take a look at the pieces. Nah... Uh, I don't know if those look that great. Oh, it's a board game. That's a self-made 3D version of it. Okay, well, that's not worth looking at then. Huh. There is not a ton of pieces, just the box cover itself. Alrighty, let's keep moving on here. Epic Monster Tea Party. Well, that sounds fun. Adventure Time Card Wars, Lemon Grab vs. Gunter. Hey, I played this one. Or I played one of the Adventure Times. You know, it's kind of funny because now that I've... When I first played Adventure Time, I probably played the Finn vs. Jake. Nowadays, this would be the set that it would, I'd be like, I want to be Lemon Grab! Mostly so I don't have to listen to the, my own voice if I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Versus Gunter. Uh, Alright, now we're getting to some games I've played here. So we got Boom Bang Gold, Wayward, and Froschkonig. Oh, I actually know what that game is. I, I mean, I, sometimes I forget. And then Barbarian Kings will come back to that. Let's look at the three that I do know. Boom Bang Gold. This is a fun game from Haba in which you are actually throwing dynamite into a box trying to get gold pieces to come out. So that's fun. You can see the action picture there. And then Wayward is an okay game and looks like you're just putting these together in a grid to make words. It looks really boring now. Um, this game, I ranked it and back in almost 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't be as excited now. But Tom Jolly did design it, and he's put together some good games. And then Froschkönig. You can see the picture here of a frog trying to kiss the princess, and that is what you're doing in this game. You are trying to put these sticks out to be the first to kiss the pr princess. It comes with these really cool wooden frogs, and then you are just shooting your tongue out as far as you can to try to hit that princess. It is immensely humorous. I, I, I like this idea a lot. It's, it's a kid's game, if you haven't figured it out. All right, Barbarian Kings. This one has 178 votes, so we need to stop and take a look at that one. Wow, it's from 1980. I mean, look at this guy. It's sort of shiny. He's holding it out. His muscles. And then, what? It's another war game. Look at all those counters. It's kind of weird that this, this both kind of turns me off, these counters, and at the same time, I get this nostalgia, and I want to at least read the rules for these games. Ah, right, looks cool. Barbarian Kings. Really generic name, though. Uh, we got Dragon Island here. And Chicken Foot. Well, let's look at Dragon Island. Dragon Island here from r, &R Games. Huh. Is Dragon Island just out now? Because I see these 2017. This is one that I must admit, it's, it's designed by Mike Fitzgerald. Yes, I do remember when this came out. And I heard that some people liked it, but it was one that I never actually played. I think someone else from the Dice Tower reviewed it before I did. Huh. And then we got Gameception, which is a game and a game and a game. Uh, there's Harvest of Death, the second day at Gettysburg. Chicken Foot, Waterloo, Ardeny 1944. All right, we'll look at Chicken Foot because i got to figure out what that one is. Oh, it's like a domino game. Ooh, okay. Uh, wow. I see. It's letting you split the dominoes. Meh. All right. And then we'll always look at the first and we'll always look at the last game today. The last game is Linkage from 2009. 7x7 seven seven grid. The middle square. Huh. This is the kind of game that I would probably try at least once. I like the concept of it. I bet oh, those people look very serious about it. Huh. They look like the dominoes. This, this, that version looked like the dominoes from the, the dominoes that you knock over. Well, there's a Lego version of this game. Interesting. All right. Well, there you go, folks. That is all the games from 10,000 to 10,100. Um, just want to take a look at them along with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching 10,000 and below.